We've done well. Not a lot of heads moving. I think we've got some challenges in front of us. I think so. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, um, I guess, give you a little bit of perspective on some of the things that we're seeing in terms of the change in the way market research is adopting to this this digital uh, evolution. Um, a little bit, just picking up on where Dr. Fenwick left off, the world certainly has changed. Uh, there are more devices out there, the way in which we're using them. We're connecting to friends, brands are connecting to us, uh, we're connecting back to brands through a plethora of social media sites, through devices, etc. And just as what was talked about is brands are having to come up with new ways. So this is for you know, a media brand like CNN, but it's true of all of all the individual brands as well in terms of your communication message. It's not just about getting it onto different channels, but it's also about optimizing your message for those particular channels because the way, the way in which people are consuming media is different based on, on device. But it's even more than that. Just one thing is the devices, one thing is the access to the internet, but the way in which we connect to the internet now, it's on the way to work, it's, it's in the toilet, it's on the we're talking to friends, and I don't know if your house looks anything like mine, but last last week, sitting down with the family watching TV, and I thought, kind of looked to my left, and my wife and daughter were sitting on the couch, and I counted the number of devices that were engaged while we were having family time. There were seven. There's only three of us in the family. <laughs> Everybody had the smartphone sitting on their lap or the tablet there. I had the laptop open. My daughter had the laptop open. And she, she was doing two things at once. She had the TV that we were supposedly the show we were watching together, conversing. She's got, she's Skyping with a friend. And then she's got streaming vi uh, music videos as well at the same time on the laptop and the smartphone which she's doing WhatsApp with. The world has changed, um, and that's for sure. And what, what it is now is the consumer has now more power than ever before. Uh, in a recent Forrester webinar, they talked about technology-empowered consumers are forcing companies to be more customer-obsessed. We need to now get closer to customers than ever before. I love the uh, image that you showed uh, earlier with the, uh, the 1970s family around the TV um, and targeting. You know, Stand still and I can give you a message. Nobody's standing still anymore. The other thing of this Forrester uh, report, and if you're interested in the report, uh, and it, even though it is dated to 2011, which all of a sudden seems old, it's two years old, it's really old now, uh, but talking about this change to the age of the customer. I think for the last decade we've been talking about information. We need more data, we need more information because there's so many new data streams. But now it is moving into the age of the customer, looking at the, the empowerment that consumers have now. So again, I challenge to say, well, what about us as a research industry or as marketeers? What have we done to, to uh, adopt to this changing environment? Uh, a good quote that, well, I like from P&G. It says, we were the greatest marketers of the 20th century because we were the loudest shouters. But to be the best in the 21st century is because we'll be the best listeners. Now, that was a quote from a few years ago, right? Uh, Mike, I know, because uh, A.G. Lafferty is now the chairman, he's no longer the CEO, but I've got a new quote, um, which just was more recently, Maz actually sent this to me, still from P&G, but now talking about, to address these technology forces, our vision is to build our brands through lifelong one-to-one -one relationships in real time with every person in the world. Now that's a rather ambitious goal, uh, but again, it's about utilizing this digital phenomenon, the way that people are changing, um, and companies like P&G and others are going to have to adopt about a customer-centric approach. But it doesn't stop there. So we know that the world of your customer, the respondent, the panelist, has changed the way in which they communicate, etc. Competition. You've got more competition now than we ever had before, regardless of where, where you're sitting, whether you're a tel telecom, an automotive manufacturer, a uh, FMCG company, more, more competition now than you've ever seen. And time, time pressures to make decisions to evolve are harder than they've ever been. If we look at the traditional research model, this hasn't changed. It really hasn't evolved since the advent of market research. You're writing briefs, you're sending them to the agencies, agencies write proposals, they submit them back to you, two or three weeks later you select one, procurement then has to confirm that they're the right value for money, finally it gets awarded, 
A few weeks later, it goes into field, and you've got some top line results. And a few weeks after that, you've got your charts and you've got your tables. The world doesn't work that way. Businesses now are making decisions without the benefit of consumer insight because they can't wait for this rigid, long, long uh, evolutionary process. So what I'm going to talk to you about now is about our look at community panels, which is really about putting the brand and the customer together in a continuous dialogue and conversation. So I'm going to define community panels using these four words, private, branded, research communities. And actually, actually, it, it, we didn't look at each other's decks before this, but I've added the word engaged in this, because at the epicenter of all of this, you must build engagement in order to build an authentic conversation with your customers uh, to drive insights. So let's take private. So the idea of a community panel is that this is your customers. This isn't about a general access panel. This is about reaching out to identify the targeted group of your customers that you're interested in talking to and engaging and learning from over time. It's about recruiting them into an online environment. And again, I've got the brands around the outside, but keeping in mind that these are specific customers to each of these brands. This isn't a one large panel. This is about a panel that's of your customers that you have a relationship with. And being able to do qualitative and quantitative studies with them, but not in the way in which that you think about. You know, I've been in research for well, too long. Um, and you think about when you think quant studies, what does that conjure up in your mind? You think about long, you know, 30, 40 minute the interviews where everybody's trying to get another question in because the cost of getting that sample, and you've got to get more questions in there. That's much different. So we're talking about building engagement, still through qualitative and quantitative activities, but in a way that's much more to what the consumer is used to. I'll build on that in a minute. And the types of activities that we do with community panels is basically anything that's customer-centric. So this can be ethnographic research, UNAs, it can be uh, competitive perspectives, it can be a wide variety of different activities. And it doesn't stop there. I mean, really think about anything, the conversation you want to have with a customer in a way that will work within the context of a community panel. And it's even offline, so using your community panel to recruit for a traditional IDI or focus group. And like I said, these are branded environments. It's no longer about an anonymous engagement with a, a, a respondent. It's about a conversation with a customer. So we want them to know who's the brand behind the engagement. We want them to feel part of a, being an advisor to the brand to help shape the products and services. So whether this is whiskey drinkers for Johnny Walker, uh, looking at Clinique, and you can see with the, with the branding, it's, so it's on brand, but also using words that are inviting. We want people to feel that this is a unique opportunity to help shape the products and services for that particular brand. Kitchen conversations, so around Nestle, because maybe the relationship with Nestle may not be with the brand per se, it's more about um, engaging with in the kitchen. Who's eating? How are meals prepared? How does that look now? So Nestle can get closer to the customer rather than thinking of it as a product specific approach. Automotive, uh, banking, um, B2B with Microsoft up there. Uh, we even have panels with Chanel. Now, one of the criteria, so Chanel, we've got this in the U.S. and in, and in China. <coughs> one of the criteria if, for one of the segments is you must spend more than 25,000 U.S. dollars in a Chanel store. I checked, my wife's not on the panel, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, so, you know, because sometimes you get this, well, will it work with the, you know, the, the wealthy? It does. I mean, people shop in Chanel because they love the brand. They have a perspective and they want to talk about it. MTV does a panel where it's all about understanding pop culture. They actually aren't doing things related to the channel. They just want to get closer to the customers to understand what, what are the trends, what are you into? Uh, Pepsi does a multi-brand panel, so rather than it just being around, say, PepsiCo, it's about drinks in general. Uh, and another banking example, because you can do both B2B, B2C, and you get banking, you know, a little bit more of a drier um, subject, let's say. But people have vested interests. You all bank. You all have a relationship with your bank. You have vested interests in seeing that bank's products and services improve. Um, so again, the, the list goes on and on and on. 
when you think about community panels, there's a couple dimensions that you may want to look at if you're thinking of engaging here. One of which is the size of the panel. How many folks do you want to reach out to? And the duration. How long do you want to be engaged with folks on the panel? Sometimes we're doing things which we call MROCs, which are more qualitative, short term, maybe around a specific activity or idea. Uh, the other area of what we call community panels is going to be much more qual quant and much larger. So a lot of the panel examples that we had on the previous slide, these panels would be 5,000, 10,000 members and growing. And the trend that we're seeing in Asia, and actually trend uh, we've seen in other markets as well, is that often the qualitative side is where we're starting to see the advent of community panel research and moving into the larger um, quant qual, larger long-term engagements. Engagement, the word engagement, this is critical because again, you can see the branding, but in order to truly have an authentic conversation with your customer, we need to look at engagement. And really the way to judge engagement is gonna be around response rates. Are people responding to your requests and your dialogue? Currently on average, we've got about 40% response rate. Now this is something you probably don't see often in a, in a market research presentation, but actually we're looking at these response rates improving over time. I'm going to say that again, response rates improving. When's the last time you've ever heard somebody talk about increasing response rates? Why and how has that happened? Well, a lot of that has to do with the way in which you communicate, but also the platform and the software. We know that this is the environment we're all presenting them with a flat paper-based survey that's put online, that 35, 40 minute, get every last question in there, doesn't work. You need to actually provide an engaging way of doing survey research with them. Gamification, if I may. Really make it pop, make it visual, because this is what they're used to seeing. So question types are evolving. It's about using different innovative ways of media to engage, still with the power of a fully functional research tool. You know, you can do the rotation and randomization, all the things you need, but doing it in a way that's much more, I dare say, web 2.0, multimedia, et cetera. The other aspect of this, and uh, Dr. Um, uh, Fenwick said earlier about, do you have a mobile strategy? Well, the truth of the matter is, you do whether you know it or not, because people are accessing the, it, accessing the internet on their mobile. So it's not just about having, say, an engaging web platform. You need to be able to provide that through a mobile capability as well. Because people are accessing your content uh, on their mobile devices. So without having a mobile strategy, uh, well, you, you've got one, it's just that it's not going to be optimized. Now, the last thing is, to pull this together, is actually the research and communities, tying it together. So it's great to talk about the engagement and all that, but what's the business benefit? How does this actually work? So I'm going to quickly illustrate this through an example of some work uh, that actually ABN led with Cathay Pacific. Um, and what we did with them is basically worked on building a, a panel, a uh, cross-section of different customer segments, so using their identified um, segmentation and recruiting a variety of different passengers into the panel. And through that, the, the initial phase of the community panel was focused on a couple areas. One was looking at um, how people are uh, e-commerce, so how they're using the web to book and, and investigate travel, buy tickets, etc but also then it evolved into looking at the overall customer journey. So again, just using some um, interactive ways to illustrate the, the path to purchase, the journey for the customer, getting them to respond to this is my pain point, this is what works well, this is where it doesn't, but building it much more as a, an iterative process. So rather than kind of a one-off survey and then analysis, it was an engagement that started with, I've got a concept, let's talk about this for a little bit. Uh, this was done at a quantitative level, but then if you saw things that were insight, insightful, diving into some qual and back and forth. Um, from that, able to get some really good insights in terms of the different segments where people had some pain points, what they were looking for, what they were hoping the brand could deliver. Uh, from that, there was some testing of new concepts. And the interesting thing with this is that Cathay put out some um, concepts that they wanted to test. Would you be interested in this feature? Would you be interested in this? But through the engaged dialogue, actually the panelists started coming back and saying, yeah, that interested in that, but have you thought about this? So actually generating through this authentic conversation a un, uh, unprompted response from them, ask giving them feedback about, hey, here's another idea that I thought of that may, may help my life be better and maybe others. 
And what we found with this, and I'm sorry I'm going through this quickly, I'm sure we're going to be able to circulate the detail later. We, we got comments when we asked the panelists, you know, what do you think about being on the panel? Um, you know, so I'll share a couple of them. You know, a proactive and direct way for customers to share views on CX, reflects CX uh, values, uh, customer opinions. It really was about all of a sudden, it, I fly with Cafe, but now my voice is being heard. It's no longer anonymous surveys or surveys that you feel go in one direction and there's no feedback. One of the other things we did is, and this is quite a unique thing, is we asked, well, what other things would you be interested in talking about? Can you imagine ending a survey and saying, what surveys would you like to do next? <laughs> well, actually, we did that, and it came back and said, I'd really, you know, the panel was saying, oh, we'd really like to talk about food, we'd like to talk about destination promotions. <coughs> so we're actually being able to solicit feedback from your customers about the things that they're interested in, not just what you're interested in. And some great insights for building off of that. We ended this first wave uh, and said, okay, the other panels, and we had about, I think there was a, nearly a thousand folks on the, on the panel for the first wave. We said, Cathay's looking at expanding this and, and making this a longer term initiative. Um, would you be interested in staying on the panel um, in, in participating in this ongoing? 96% of the panelists said, yep, keep me on. I want to continue to do research with you. Now, all this is great, but really, at the business side, you need to make sure this has got value to the business. Um, and a, a good quote from the general manager of sales and distribution, who is one of the co-owners of this initial initiative. Uh, we see the community panel as an ongoing conversation with people we serve. This meaningful engagement with our brand gives us richer insights and loyal customers who, who know they are the genuine stake in the future of the co company. More insights, because basically, it's, it's a conversation. It's a human relationship. If you think about that in personal life, when you meet somebody for the first time, you know, you can be cordial, exchange some ideas, but as you get to know people, you feel more and more comfortable sharing, more and more comfortable telling them the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's exactly what Banana Republic saw, but they also saw there was a 25% increase in spend amongst their panel members. So they decided, hmm, not only are we getting better insights, but we can actually make this, build some advocacy here and they expanded the panel into 50,000 members. Now, I'm not saying this is a marketing panel. This is still all about research, but what you're doing is you're basically creating an environment of, of folks that have an affinity to the brand to help share with you insights and help you improve your products and services, and ultimately <coughs> resulting in better performance for the brand and building these advocates. Last slide is just to show you a quote, one of my, most, my favorite quotes from Jack Welch. Businesses only have two sources of competitive advantage. Learn more about their customers faster than the competition. And to apply uh, the ability to turn that learning into action faster than the competition. These are universal. Regardless of what industry you're in, these are what we're working with. This, this is today's environment. So again, um, we're going to talk some more about some real examples here and some questions at the end. Uh, but with that, thank you very much. <laughs>